Welcome back to Just Scylla. This is episode 12. In the last segment, episode 11, I talked a little bit about sharing my Me Too story. And I was joined by Delisa Richardson, who shared her Me Too story. Um, in this episode, we are going to talk about the importance of staying true to yourself in the midst of this out of control Me Too movement because it doesn't change the things that happen to you. So I'm delighted to have Delissa back with me. Thank you. Delissa is a life coach, a wellness coach, and a child abuse survivor, and a hashtag Me Too woman. Yes. Survivor. And that will never change. That will never change. And I actually would prefer to say I'm a thriver. Mm, I like that. Because, you know, we, we, we go from the pain to surviving the incident. And then once we do the work, then we go on to the goals to thrive and live your life. And Indeed. then pay that forward. So Pay that forward. Definitely. And that's what makes this podcast really important. Because for us, it's about paying it forward. To be able to break the cycle in somebody's family. Uh, to be able to give strength to a parent who may not be able to listen right now to be able to tell that woman and man sometimes that what you went through is valid despite what you may be hearing in the news, the whole backlash of it. And so I shared my story. That was the only story that I felt comfortable sharing at that time. The fact of the matter is I have been sexually abused by several members of my extended family. Um, but through therapy, I'm going to work through those things. I just, that was what I was ready to talk about. And so now it's what happened after, because you shared your story about being um, abused by your brother. Yes. Yes. You know, it was something that I really had to wrestle with to decide whether or not I wanted to do it in such a public forum. I remember when you first sent out the correspondence and I just, I chewed on it for a while. And I finally, after some reflection, after some prayer, I said, you know, this is something I need to do this. Not only to say it out loud, you know, for myself, but I know that this can help somebody else because that's part of the thing that keeps people, you know, in their bubble is there's so much shame and guilt around abuse, the, the particularly the kind of abuse at, at the hands of a, of a family member. And despite me actually talking about it, I still have, I still feel shame because it's such a big scope. And I don't think people are really ready to hear it. You are braver than me in many ways because I shared the story that I was comfortable sharing. I'm not yet comfortable sharing all these things that were happening um, in my home uh, by extended family members. So that shame still exists. And what it means is it still impacts many parts of my life. And we talked about therapy in the last session that I'm in therapy. Right. You know, and we, I mentioned that, yes, we, we both go to therapy. And, you know, as far as that shame, that's something that you have to work with. But, you know, you, how you choose to share your experience and what happened to you is totally up to you. And mm. you have to work within yourself. You work with your therapist. And you decide, you know, where, what's it going to, what the, what's the outcome? What's going to happen? Because, you know, we, we talked about how I did not tell my mom. I worked that through with my therapist because I knew that I was dealing with someone who was unhealed. And I understood that from things that had happened to her. You know, we talked about the cycle of abuse and neglect and just things that had gone on down my family line. So I knew that the response was going to probably be, probably be a breaker a relationship breaker. So I chose not to. And then, you know, two weeks after I told the story, my mom, you know, passed away. And I have no 
reservations or no guilt or anything about choosing not to tell because you, you can, you're not responsible for how someone chooses to act, whether they believe you or not. You have to be empowered in knowing what happened to you. You know your truth, and now your goal is to get healthy. And if they don't receive it, they don't receive it. And maybe later they will. They may be going through their own denial. That is very interesting because I've never asked my mother what her life story was. We've never talked about it. I've been here for 20 years. And um, I told her about uh, the abuse as it was at the hands of her brother. And she, she didn't process it in the way that made me feel good. So it led me down a path of anger. Yes. I remember being with my therapist, you know, when I went with my partner and my therapist, even my kids say, mommy, you're always so angry. You know, and my therapist was saying your body, you know, there's this, your body is really tense. Right. You know, I didn't realize the burden that I was carrying every day because I thought I was just fine. So when I shared my Me Too story on a very public platform, and that video is on YouTube, it, re it released me when my mother finally realized that the way to my healing was for her to say something. So she messaged me and said she was sorry for not sitting down to hear me in the way that I needed to be heard so that was seven years after I told her. And it turned out that all that anger I was carrying was against my mother. Wow. Because she didn't protect me. Because right. I thought it was against my abuser. It was against everybody who didn't believe me. Not particularly my abuser. Right. Because I'd carried that for so long. Um what it means for me is no matter what is happening in the news with the Me Too movement, it doesn't change my story. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't, none of that changes what happened to you and how you choose to tell your story, how you choose to help. I thoroughly believe in paying it forward to reach out, doing this podcast to help just one person. You know, if you need, if there's something that you need to say, if something has happened to you, go, go forward. If you need a safe space, go into therapy. You know, that's why we're doing this right yes. now. And yes. it don't worry about someone who can't receive it because, you know, in the end, it's not about you. Everyone's on their individual journey. If that person doesn't receive it, okay, fine. You have to get healthy. How did, how did your family respond to you using your voice so publicly for such a big life experience? My family, for the most part, was very supportive because for a lot of them at the time, it was the first time they had found out as well. Mm. Um, I had to have separate conversations. I had to have conversations with my children. Then I had conversations with my sister, and there are a couple of family members that I have not had direct conversations with. It's out there, and they can do with it what, what they may. Um, I also had conversations with, like, my niece. And I had to – It was that was very difficult because my, my children saw my brother in a very different light. You know, everyone has a different relationship with a person in a family. Totally. So – it was difficult to navigate, you know, how they, they saw their uncle at the time and then to hear this. So I had to really speak to them and encourage them. Maybe if you, you know, talk to me, if you need to talk to me, or, you know, if this is hitting you very hard, you know, talk to someone. And you know I go to therapy, talk to someone, because they had a very different relationship with their uncle. So you can imagine hearing that they thought, this was one way, and he had passed away after, you know, well, before I had told my story, and then to come and find out this happened to your mom. I had a lot of mixed reactions because I had family members who say what you see in the news. Well, why didn't you speak up then? Mm -hmm. And if you're a survivor, 
you know that that's a question everybody wants to know. Why did you speak out up then? And there are so many reasons, but you have to put someone in you have to imagine that that person is in a powerless position. And then if it's something that is within the family, you're seeing that person who may be so charming, just interacting with the people that you would generally go to with issues. So you don't feel that that's a safe place to go to and open up. Right. And so you just keep it inside. Or you're so young that you, you just think that it's you, that you did something bad. Yes. That you yes. caused this, so you're going to, you know, I just internalized all of that and and kept that in. And yeah, you know, there are the people who were, well, how how could you sit next to them at, you know, Thanksgiving and, and all laugh. these holidays? And, uh, and I laugh saw you and, with them after. You guys right. looked like you were exactly. That's a, a a big block for some people, and you know, I don't think that you owe everyone this deep detailed information into how the mind Mm -hmm. works when you have been abused. Oh, that is powerful. It's just like, this is what I did. And I did what I did to survive. And you can deal with it or not. It's not my issue. And you compartmentalize these experiences. Definitely. So my experiences were in a box somewhere deep in my soul and I'd moved on and I'd come to a different country. It was done and I was going to move on with my life, not realizing that every decision that I was making as an adult was linked to those experiences in my life. And so that never changes until you address it. So when you speak up, you're speaking up to free yourself. It is not to get what you need from other people. You will not get it. If you're lucky, somebody might sympathize. But the fact of the matter is you're doing it for you to free yourself. I felt such powerful freedom to say that this happened to me. Definitely, that was powerful. Definitely. And not only that's just the start of it. You know, mm-hmm. you say, okay, this is this happened to me. And then you look at some of the decisions that were made in the, you know, years or in my case, decades yes. after. And you each little nugget of shame and guilt and embarrassment has to be dealt with. And even though it all comes back to that instance. It, it all just kind of feeds on each other. Because, yeah, okay, so I've, I've got to deal with this marriage issue. I've got to deal with this bad relationship. I've got mm-hmm. to deal with this um, eating issue. I've got to deal with this drinking issue. All of that has to come out. And it won't come out until you're ready to say, this happened to me. And I it's okay hurt. to still say that even if you feel you will be judged because the world is a really cruel place. And right now the Me Too um, movement, and I don't like calling it a movement. Yeah, I I really don't. Because it's not a movement. It's what happens to us. It's what happened. It's a fact. It is not a movement. And so separating those lies you know, those who maybe lied from those who are saying what really happened, you can't do that. So I believe people's stories when they say them until something happens that makes me think otherwise because the problem with abuse or sexual harassment is that the person in power is somebody that is so powerful and many times so charming that you don't have a chance of being believed. Yes, definitely. And and it's so faceted because there is the sexual harassment work aspect and then there's also, you know, the abuse, childhood sexual abuse aspects. It's so many things that are that are intertwined. And I'm sure if you would would take a look, you would you would see that someone who just doesn't feel like they had a voice from a young age for whatever reason you know, maybe alcoholic household or, or whatever, or just we're told sit there, look pretty, be quiet mm-hmm. from the time they were a little girl. Oh, if you're or, pretty, or it was your fault. Right. You know, you, you, you didn't feel like you had a voice. So you just sit back and 
allow. Some, if you are one of those who, you know, are strong and you can say no and get away and that's great. Not everyone can do has that. that. Not yes. everyone has that. And they shouldn't be scorned for it or scrutinized for it and asked, well, why, why didn't you should not come out of anyone's mouth? Yes. We have to wrap this up. I could talk to you forever because every time I talk to you, I feel lighter. It must be the life coach in you. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you for joining us. And listen, you never quite know what's going on. This is a very hard world. But all you can do is lend somebody an ear when they need you. So if somebody comes to you and tell you something is happening to them, take the time to believe them, be there for them, see what you can do to help. And if you've gone through things and people have not believed you, it's okay. It's your story. You've released it. And that is powerful. See you next time.